Alright everyone, welcome back for more of my Manchester United career on FIFA 16. And you join me at one of the most exciting and could possibly be one of the most controversial times of the season. The transfer deadline day. Which player is going to be moving to which club? What's going to happen? I've already done my business. I made sure I did that nice and early on in this career mode. I've brought in Harry Kane and Raphael Varane. If you missed that, be sure to go back and check out the last couple of episodes. Now, as you can see, a couple of other big moves to be made in this transfer window is Pastore from PSG to Atletico Madrid for 30 million. Dani Alves has moved from Valencia to AC Milan. And Thomas Muller has just signed for Manchester City for 51 million. They're not afraid to splash the cash this season. They know what they have to do if they want to be lifting silverware come the end of the season. They've already brought in Raheem Sterling, Kevin De Bruyne from Wolfsburg, and now... Thomas Muller, they're going to be an unstoppable force. It's going to be interesting to see how we get on as well when we come up against them at the Etihad and at Old Trafford. Looking forward to that. Guyton from Benfica, I hope I've pronounced his name right, has just moved to Barcelona in a big money move there. 26.5 million and Roma have accepted 37 million from Valencia. So they're spending that money that they've just received from the Dani Alves move on Pjanic from Roma and <laughs> take a look at that there's our scripted move Alaba has finally put pen to paper for Juventus he's moved from Bayern for 38.5 million I'm surprised that Pep Guardiola is letting these players go Muller Alaba two key players in their team and he's letting them go what is going on Spurs interested in Lacazette they need a replacement for Harry Kane after his move to us so will they be able to get Lacazette to put pen to paper with not long remaining on the clock Let's have a look what else we've got here. Galatasaray have accepted an 8 million bid from Leicester for Kea. They're going to prove to be a solid team this season. Chelsea have signed Palacios, the 22-year-old, for 1.5 mil. Nick Powell linked with a move to Angers. Not going to be happening. And Watford have completed the signing of Aston Villa's Brad Guzon. That's an interesting one. So an hour to go, and that should be all she wrote for this transfer window. Did Spurs get... Lacazette, I don't think they did. I don't think they managed to get the paperwork through in time. And that's the end of this summer's transfer deadline day. Now, as I promised you guys, I would take you through the Champions League group stage draw. So in Group A, you've got Barcelona, Arsenal, Shakhtar, Donetsk and Lazio. Moving on to Group B, you've got Chelsea, Roma, Sevilla and Sporting Lisbon. In Group C, we've got Bayern Munich, Atletico Madrid, Galatasaray, they've lost Kea now to Leicester and Monaco. In Group D, there is last season's runners-up in Juventus, Real Madrid, Wolfsburg and Club Bruges. Group E is Manchester United's group. We've got Benfica, CSK in Moscow and Bayer Leverkusen will be coming up against Hernandez there. And in Group F, PSG, Porto, Olympiacos and FC Basel. I can easily see PSG and Porto qualifying from that group. In Group G, Zenit St. Petersburg. Olympic Lyon, Borussia Mönchengladbach and Ghent. And finally, in Group H, you've got PSV, Manchester City, Valencia and Celtic. So these are our fixtures for the month of September. First, we've got the Northwest Derby against Liverpool. Then midweek on the Tuesday, we're away to Benfica in our first Champions League group stage fixture of the season. Then we're away again at the St. Mary's this time in the Premier League against Southampton. Then we've been drawn against Huddersfield. We're back at Old Trafford for that fixture on the Tuesday evening. You can see the other draws being made there as well. Arsenal Scunthorpe at the top. And then our last Premier League game of September is at home against Sunderland. And we finish up the month of September in the Champions League again against CSK in Moscow. We will be travelling to Russia for that one. It's going to be a tough one that I think especially for the players. This is the league table as it stands. We've played 4-1-3, drew 1. We are sitting on top but level on points with Everton, who are doing fantastic at the moment. It's the North West Derby. It's Manchester United against Liverpool at Old Trafford. Brendan Rodgers' Liverpool will be looking to pick themselves up after a poor start to their season. They are all the way down in 14th with just four points to their name, but they've got a tough test ahead of them as it's Manchester United that are in better form, especially at home. So this is my lineup. De Gea starts in goal at the back. I've got Darmian and Smallin, Varane and Rojo who starts at left back. I have changed the formation slightly to the 4-3-3, so Blin slips into that defensive mid-roll 
with the Schneidmare midfield. We've got Mata and Memphis out on the flanks with Wayne Rooney starting at front. And for Liverpool, a team that's capable. Hopefully we don't see a flare of partnership between Benteke and Sturridge in this one as Coutinho just slips in behind in that number 10 role for them. Liverpool wanting to break out at the moment. Wanted to get their feet to the ball, but we're not going to allow it. I can try and whip this in with Juan Mata on his left. Get a good delivery going. And it looks like I'm going to get a second chance to whip it in again. Yes, anyone on the end of it? Blinds? No. De Gea, solid as ever. Oh, no. Yet to concede a goal in the Premier League. Gives an open goal for Lovren. He will be kicking himself. He should have made that one count. He should. Oh, what am I doing? Benteke. Oh, he's hit the post and Sturridge was never going to miss from there. It's Liverpool with their head start with 15 minutes gone. And of course, he's going to go and celebrate with his teammates. They're in the driver's seat then. Can't allow Liverpool to hold on to this 1-0 lead. Memphis almost got the equaliser there with that header. That goal from Liverpool has certainly woken us up. We're looking sharper in attack. Here we go with Rooney. Oh, I should have took a touch there. Had plenty of space and time. It should be 1-1. I don't want to go in at half-time losing to Liverpool. Not at Old Trafford. That's going to... Yes, that is going to be a free kick. Mata getting pinched there. Getting sandwiched between Milner and Skirtle. I'm going to give this one to uh, Memphis. Who scored the winning goal against Brighton in the Capital One Cup from a free kick. Let's see if we can get an equaliser here. 26 yards out. Oh, it's gone in. <laughs> 1-1, one, one. Old Trafford has come alive again just before half-time thanks to this free kick. Bent it round the wall and Mignolet couldn't do a thing about it. Superb. Three minutes added on. Manchester United is surging forwards. Give this to Rooney. Oh, no way! It's gone in! It's 2-1 to United. We've really turned this game around on its head before that half-time whistle. Liverpool in a world of trouble. You can just imagine Brendan Rodgers on the touchline sweating over whether he's going to lose his job tomorrow. Look at Rooney, how he sidesteps Skirtle. To be fair to Liverpool, they've come out in the second half with fresh ideas. And Sturridge, he's going to keep it in. No! Oh, Coutinho could have easily have made it to all there. What a volley. Oh, look at the space we've been given here for Herrera. Oh, look at Memphis. But it's going to be Kane. The game makes it 3-1. Ten minutes to go. The game is over. That's it. Put to bed. Liverpool, they're not going to be walking away with any points from this one. Nathaniel Klein, the one to blame there for Liverpool. Yes, he had a lot to deal with. He was tracking Harry Kane, but he also had Memphis playing off the shoulder. But he should be doing a lot better there. He should be making a challenge on Harry Kane. Very well taken. Well, well, well. Who would have thought the final score would read 3-1 to Manchester United? I mean, Liverpool, they got off to such a bright start with that first goal, getting their nose in front, but they just lost it after that equaliser went in. So after that convincing 3-1 win over Liverpool, our biggest rivals in the Premier League, it was on to train and before our midweek fixture in the Champions League against Benfica. Before we travelled out, we were at Carrington and I had Wilson, Lingard, Pereira, Memphis all focusing on different areas of their game. So for Wilson, just the headers and volleys. He's been doing fantastic whenever I've simulated picking up C's and B's. I wanted to try and get an A and I'm certainly on track. And I did get an A in the end for James Wilson. He, he was tremendous in that session. Up next, it was Lingard with his dribbling skills, trying to beat his man. And it, of all players as well, it would have to be Fellaini, the big frame and just his overall presence. It was kind of unfair, but... It was a challenge and I thought I did okay. I mean, I messed up a few times with Fellaini actually dispossessing me and getting caught in possession and everything. But I threw in a couple of tricks here and there and got a C for that performance in BT Man. So not too bad for Jesse Lingard. Now, this session, keep possession. I'm not sure if any of you guys have tried this yet, but it was so frustrating for me. I think I got an F for Nick Powell. Coming up against Schweinsteiger in this area, it's so compact as well and having to finish so annoying and also trying to keep up or try to keep in front of Memphis as well who's a quicker player than Nick Powell it's so difficult and those damn walls kept getting in the way so frustrating go and try it out if you haven't already guys and good luck that's gonna be all for this episode guys thanks for watching